Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the news. This is your anchor. Our vacation today is educational problems in the face of COVID-19. It seems that problems have occurred during the pandemic. Since so many schools shut down, what can we do with the divide? Teachers and students are all separated because of home quarantine. Let's welcome the next guest. Hello, everyone. We are Nicole. Jay. Global Library Perry School in Taiwan. Hi, Hi. We, are, we are live, live broadcasting from Uzija Bird Gas yes. Station. We are Marino, Haruka, and we are really pleased to be invited to Gongan News. So, Nicole, tell us what you think. We know that every country has been taking action to protect the health of people, such as stocking down school to reduce the risk of getting cluster infection. There are now over 180 countries that have shut down their school to re to for temporary home quarantine. Well, there has been ways to maintain quality education. And what is quality education? Quality education ensures inclusive and equ equitable quality education and promotes lifelong learning opportunities for all. And any concrete ways to achieve quality education? Well. There are many indeed. One is through online teaching. What we can actually do is that students and teachers meet on Google Meet once a day. The advantages of this solution are as follows. First, it helps prevent COVID-19 from spreading further. Also, if teachers upload the courses that students have joined, it increases the chance of self-learning. Students can watch those learning videos many times. And what if students get distracted during online learning? I'm very glad to answer this question. Online teaching also allows students to raise questions and receive feedback immediately. Teachers can use some teaching strategies to get students out. By doing so, teachers can make sure students participate in the learning actively. And I'm concerned that students, students may not have access, access to the meet children, children with computers on almost related areas that have poor internet connection and have difficulty joining the online courses. Make our follies, we think that governments can set up educational TV channels and radio channels broadcast them 24-7 so that students can watch or listen them anytime they want to learn. Well, and how about if students have questions regarding what they learn after online courses? Well, we can make good use of applications such as Facebook. The concrete way to build a question and answer system is creating a learning club, which involves some volunteers who have an education certification. When students have some questions, they can go to the club and make appointment to seek help. As for the situation without the internet, the other way is create a 24-hour hotline. That means after they watch the TV programs or listen to the radio, the host will offer phone numbers or show the information on the screen. If they have questions, they could make a phone call to choose whether they want to talk to AI robots or volunteers in their own countries. But it's gonna organize the service teams. Well, actually we can send the plan of the programs to, go to the governments in their own countries by, uh, and ask the resources for, from their governments. By using above methods, we believe that students can get crop assistance even they um, learn at home. And do you think they are enough to fully bridge the divide? Computers or even electronic products aren't readily available in rural areas. How are they going to learn? To fix this gap, we can raise money to help students in need by getting their resources. For instance, we can cooperate with celebrities. They have great influence to persuade people to participate in crowdfunding or donating money and resources. Also, shooting micro movies showing kids' eagerness to learn when denied learning opportunities because of COVID-19 is another way to raise funds. 
share them on social media. In this way, more and more people will be aware of the situation and give a helping hand. And totally agree. But in the future, what can we do to train our next generation to survive in this kind of tough situation and achieve quality education? We should start with pre-primary education because what infants experience and learn has a very important role in the growth period. It eventually affects their personalities, mood, and possibilities for their future. Focusing on pre-primary education, we came up with the idea of holding events for infants. Oh, that's cool. Can you tell us more about that? There are mainly three themes fight, nature, art, and cultural exchange. Children can develop their interests by going camping or playing in the river to develop their environmental awareness. Next one is art. Children can know how to express themselves through painting or making artworks. Finally, as for the cultural exchange, infants can play with international students or experience other cultures. By doing so, they can adapt to the diverse environment and have an understanding for other cultures from early childhood. Cool. I have never had an experience like that when I was young. We are running out of time. So anything you want to add? Yes. Um, the last thing is, yeah, this slide yeah next slide this slide shows how the organization will look like last but not least just like Chadwick Boseman once said in the movie Black Panther in times of crisis the whites build bridges while the foolish build barriers we must find a way to look after one another as if we were one single tribe Hope this wise sentence can guide us while we carry through this crucial moment in our history. And thank you for coming to Guang News today. I hope things will work out as you say. Goodbye, and stay tuned to see our next series.